Hello everyone. I hope you're all having a great day. Today I have an unboxing art supply haul to share and I'm sharing a new art supply store named Mamarte. And Mamarte is an art supply store that is in Italy. And I found them when I did a Google search for the beautiful um, vintage palette from Schminka because I very much love collecting Schminka palettes when I can find a really good price on them and I found that at Momarte. So I wanted to try it a few times before I actually shared more about it. So this is either my third or fourth order, I'm not sure, but I have found them to have even better prices than Jackson sometimes. With the European items, most of the time they are more affordable if you shop in Europe. So always check around because prices can always change. I will link them in the description box and I'm going to share my, I already opened it, but I have not unwrapped everything so I could share that with you guys and this will probably be the only time I do that because it takes extra time but I wanted you to see they use sustainable packaging which I really love that I hope all art stores start doing that and so that's why I thought I would share that with you so let's open this up and I can't wait to share what I got this month so let's get through this okay so first you get a little Grazie, I think this is saying thank you for your online order artist, I'm guessing, but I will Google, <laughs> I'll have to use Google Translate and read that. I will say using their website is not a problem because their Google translates it and it lets you click that you want it for English. And every now and then uh, when you add another, when you go to another page, Sometimes if you click on another page, like if you pull up a certain Schmincke color or something like that, you need to click English again, um, but that was really easy and it was no problem at all. So let's set that aside and then we have some peanuts, which I'm sure these are the, just like uh, other stores that are using the peanuts, but they are made out of essentially, I think it's cornstarch, so they are fully recyclable. So love that. Okay, so let me dig through here and I'll get out. Ooh. It's like a little treasure hunt because it's been a little while and now I forgot what I ordered, but this is the, uh, ooh. so now everything in this box can be recycled. I love that. Um, so here are some of the products that I did receive and we'll take a look at those in just a minute. But first I'm going to go ahead and open this. It's got some tape. So these are in glass bottles so they have protected them very well. So I chose some more colors from My Merry Blue and I'm still testing out that brand. Each brand usually has something to offer and does some colors really well and then some colors to me just aren't as well. Uh, but a, it's very personal preference. So these were very affordable at My Marte. My Merry Blue's formulation for tubes and half pans is different. If you don't want to spray your paints, you're definitely gonna wanna go with the tube I just want to try the color and I'll just spray them and soak them and, and then I'll be good to go. It's almost half price to try the half pan to see if I like the color and then I'm going to get the tube if I do love that color. And I think that's the way I'm going to go. So the first color I chose is Rose Lake. Um, it is all, uh, one thing I really like about My Mary Blue is they are making all of their colors single pigment and all light fast now. So that is one reason why I keep trying the brand. So this is Rose Lake, but it says it's actually quinacridone and it's made with PV19. So we'll swatch that in a little bit. This is transparent yellow and this is three stars light fast rating, fully transparent and made from PY150. And this is Burnt Umber. This is made from PR, PBR7. 
and it is semi-opaque. It looks like a semi-transparent or semi-opaque, one of the two, but three stars light fast ready. And then next I did get some fun supplies from Schmincke. If you are new to my channel, I really love Schmincke. I think they're my favorite brand. If I had to choose only one brand, it would be like choosing between my favorite child. <laughs> But I probably would say Schmincke just because the two paints are the same exact formulation as the half pans and they're, they're all very reliable and I find quality time after time. So I keep going back for more and I'm so excited about these. These are pigment powders from Aqu the Aqua Bronze line from Schmincke. This is pale gold and I'll open this and let you guys see. I will swatch it here later in the video, but see that color? That's really pretty. And then I also did get the Rich Pale Gold. And let's open that up. Here's what that one looks like. And again, I will swatch that in just a minute. So we'll play with these in just a little bit, but I really love these because they are pigments ready to play with. They already have the binder. I love that these are in glass jars and all you do is mix with water and they're ready to play with. So I really enjoy these and I can't wait to try all the colors, but we will play with these in a little bit. Next, you know, I had to go get this beautiful tin from Schmincke. This is a another beautiful palette from Schmincke. This is a special limited edition set. It's reissued as a part of the Schmincke Retro Watercolor Collection. Every time they showed this on Instagram, I I think my will got weaker. So they've even taken the graphics and everything and given the retro feel of how they did it a long time ago, uh, which I think is being one of my favorite brands, I think is really special. They have their old owl, apparently. So let's open this up, um, and that's all very nice, but I really wanted the special tin. I just think it's so beautiful. Um, let me show you. Oh, it's so beautiful. All right, so it has the gold lettering on the front, which says H. Schmincke and Company. So that's a throwback to their 1912 company. Uh, it does have the Oops. It does have a ring on the back side. And what I really love about this is it's a lower profile than their travel tin that I have. So this is a travel tin and look at this. It's so cute. Oh, it's so beautiful. I really, I really hope one day they can make a longer version of this because I really want to put 24 colors in it. <laughs> And um, uh, I keep hoping for that, but this will do until they do because I really do enjoy that it's a lower profile and it's not as heavy as the uh, travel tin that I have that has a water reservoir on it. But, okay, so inside you have the historic packaging that's kind of a throwback and it says, uh, thank you for being part of our history. And it says Danke, which is German for thank you. Okay, and then inside we have the color swatch, color swatch chart, and more of the old packaging. That's kind of neat how they did that. Okay, but most importantly, eight beautiful half pans. They even did their packaging of their half pans with the old with the old font and everything. So these, uh, if you haven't tried one of these travel sets, there are feet on the bottom. The this part right here can actually make it a bit wobbly. So if you're the feet aren't quite tall enough, so it's just a bit of wobbly. So I usually just put it on a cloth and then I have no trouble. But. Uh, so inside, you have eight beautiful half pans. This, the travel sets have these little rails that you can take out and you just press them in and then uh, give them a little squeeze and they come right out, which makes it really easy to switch your half pans around, which is what I wanted this set for. I really love to switch my palettes around. To me, each palette is like a new adventure and I've been really only painting for about two years. And so I'm still very much learning and figuring out what my style is. And this 
little palettes like this help push me out of my comfort zone and try colors I would never try on my own. Um, and they make me try them and learn new things. And so that's one of the reasons I really love them. The colors included in this set are Chromium Yellow Hued Lemon, Vermilion, Ultramarine Finest, Viridian, Yellow Raw Ochre, Raw Umber, English Venetian Red, and Schmincke's Payne's Gray. Okay, so I'm gonna take all of these out of the packaging and unwrap them, and then we will swatch them all out. Okay, so next is another special edition color, and it is another reissued color, part of the Schmincke Retro Watercolor Collection. And this is Cochineal Red. Um, I This is by far the most interesting um, formulation of paint I have probably ever tried. This color is, the website says that this color has been specifically reissued as a part of the Schmincke Retro Watercolor Collection. All of these, all of the Retro Watercolor Collection is supposed to be inspired by the original packaging design and color selections from 1912. And uh, they discovered these in the Schmincke archive. And this Cochineal Red and that is said to be a highlight of this collection. And according to the website, it says that they are, this is specially reissued and offers all of the characteristics of the original. And to me, that means maybe they don't use crushed bugs. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> a transparent deep red obtained from the cochineal scale insects. Cool. <laughs> okay, I don't really want to think about those things, and so I'm not sure if you want to know. But I have to tell you, um, it is a beautiful box. Yeah, let's go ahead and open it. All right, I was thinking it was going to be kind of a strawberry red. Um, it says it's two stars light fast ratings, which many reds are not quite as light fast. Uh, Schmincke has a five star or light fast rating, I believe. And then it is transparent and then also um, semi staining. I'm going to start swatching out uh, and I'm going to start with this red because I'm super excited to see what it looks like. Cochineal red. They're saying it is made from NR4 colon one. I have seen this ingredient in some of my food because I try to eat uh, more organic and natural and this is considered a natural red food coloring food which is really gross but <laughs> okay let's see here oh this looks so pretty I have a little bit I can I'm going to swatch this and then I'm going to pour it in a half pan and let it start drying that looks so pretty let's swatch this out I'm going to Add some water. Oh wow, that's really pretty. All right, this is perfect for Valentine's Day. I must say. <laughs> to me. And, oh, that's so pretty. I think they should name it Valentine's Red and then, <laughs> and then it'd be easier to <laughs> stomach think, not thinking about it, <laughs> what it's made out of. But it's really, really pretty. And it is limited edition and so that's why I had to try it, of course. Um, but yeah, really pretty. Um, I can't wait to paint with it and do some mixing and that kind of thing. So I'm going to set this aside and let that dry. You can get um, Schmincke half pans, but I really like them to be the same in a palette um, because I'm picky like that. So they are available at Momarte and they are a little bit more affordable than uh, here in the U.S. So, but I am going to do this. Um, 
I'm going to fill it like Schmincke does where they layer it in four layers. Um, go around all of the edges and I will let this dry a few days. Um, it will shrink down a bit and then I will add another layer or two depending on how much it shrinks down but I do want to let that layer down and that's how Schmincke does it so I try to do it the way they do. Um, but um, yeah it poured beautifully. I don't see any binder separation. I'm not an expert, but I have tried quite a few colors through the years. So I will set that aside, but we will definitely be painting with that in a few minutes. I'm gonna swatch this last because this color is so beautiful. It's going to distract me from <laughs> the rest of my colors. Absolutely gorgeous, and I'm so glad I got it. I believe it has dried, and so you can see the actual color once it's dried all the way. It has dulled just a little, has dried back just a little bit. Um, you could really get some nice pink tones, I think, from this. Um, so we'll try and play with that later. Now let's try the um, rich pale gold and pale gold. Just all you have to do to use these pigments is add water. And I usually start with equal water and then I thin it out, of course, if I want to. But I usually just start out with pretty much equal parts. They're very pretty. Oh, look at that. It's just pure liquid gold. Oops, I need a little more water. I really want to mix that so that the all the pigments blend in and it liquefies. And it's quite mesmerizing just looking at the pigments to me. All right. But I think I'll let that dry and see how it does. Oh, this one's pretty too. So this one was more of a yellowish gold. And this one almost has a little bit of a beige to it. I might have added too much water, too much water again. <laughs> I'm trying not to, but I also want to be able to swatch it. Yeah, really I nice. added too much water. <laughs> I added too much water again. And plus I'm on camera. I mess up everything on when I'm on camera. All right, uh, both of those are stunning. <laughs> I can't lie. All right, now what I think would be really fun. So let's try a new brush. This is a number three Da Vinci. This is a real squirrel hair brush. And this, I believe, came in a Sennelier wooden box beautiful set. I really haven't tried that many brushes because I got used to the ones I had and they worked fine so I didn't branch out. But I do have some brushes I need to try and see if they're for me or not. This brush is, um, let's see. Yeah, this is a thirsty brush. It needs a lot of water, but it's gonna hold a lot. Ooh, that's nice. But I am gonna need to add more water than I normally do. 
Okay. So since it's um, February 1st today, I have to do a heart. Oh, that holds a lot of paint. So I'll definitely have to get used to this brush. It holds a lot. Um, it holds a lot. And then I want to see how it's... Oh, that's nice. Okay. I can see why people like these. Um... That's nice. And then it would be really cool to tap a little bit while it's still wet. I wonder if you can tap a little bit of this in and wonder what would happen if you do that. Don't want to get my whole brush full of uh, um, Oh, that's pretty. It kind of does that melty thing. I haven't experimented very much with those powders. That's, of course, why I just love playing with art supplies because it's just like it's another adventure each time you play. And then, of course, you could swirl it. And get different effects. Um, yeah, I can't wait to play with that more. All right, so let's go ahead and take all of these out. It's like little candies. I just get to unwrap all of these and oh, I love the little, it's almost hard to unwrap these because they have that special packaging. I'm going to be weird though and I'm going to save the wrappers. So I'm going to save the wrappers and uh, because it lists all the pigment information and the light fast information which I find important. Each of the half pans for Schmincke does, um, it's a special size and they're a bit more square and a bit more white than uh, many in the industry. Um, they have their number on the side. Um, this 211 is the, the top number. 211 is the important number you need that um, if you need to refer back to which yellow you have. Um, but I like to take a Sharpie and write the name on the on the side. The My Mary Blue half pants, they come in packaging, which is pretty easy to open. They do have their... Um, they have a little perforated square box here that you can push through, but usually I find it's not adhesive. The adhesive isn't too strong. I can just open it like that. And I wish, um, not, I'm just gonna say it, I wish Roman Schmal would uh, <laughs> take note. <laughs> okay, so, and again, um, I hold on, I'm going to write down the pigment information for you guys on the swatches, all of their half pans, all of the important life fast and transparency information that says made in Italy and the color name. It says that it's a quinacridone and it's made with PV19. It is written small, but I'm able to read it easily without any magnifying glass or anything. 
So, but I really um, enjoy seeing all the details, so I hope you guys do too. Now, one reason I did not like the half pans from My Mary Blue is because they all wanted to stick to the packaging, which they are doing again. <laughs> so, but when I soak that, then it is going, I'm going to soak that, and then I will be able to peel it off with some tweezers fairly easy. I found that was the easiest way to do it. Now, somebody said that I could pop these in the freezer and they wouldn't do that. I have not tried that, so that might work. You might try that. All right, so I have my palette all set up and I just pop those rails back in. It will include uh, room for four more half pans. They were very tight though, so um, it seems like they went in a little bit tighter than my um, than the regular travel tin, but maybe it was just me or maybe the because I had magnets on the bottom or something like that. Um, but they do fit. Let's go ahead and swatch out the rest of the colors now. All right, so let's go ahead and I've got all of the um, pigment names and pigment information. And here is the beautiful Schmincke palette, all ready, all set up, and ready to paint. So this is Chrome Yellow Hue Lemon. It's quite a cool yellow. Little, little bit of disbursement, not a lot. I want to show you guys how rewet will be this air, but I don't want it to be in the way. I'm swatching on arches, so... I can see, uh, so I like to go in the bottom and with clean water and I like to see the dispersion and flowiness. Each pigment is a little different and then I like to let it do its thing. Next is Ultramarine Finest, which is their non-granulating Ultramarine. They have three. This is a little bit, to me, it leans a little cooler than my favorite. My favorite is the French Ultramarine, which is a bit warmer, um, and it granulates beautifully, and that's why I love it. But I keep trying to mix with this one and find, find the beauty in it. It is a nice mixing color and then it wouldn't give you any granulation and I think that's um, what the appeal is for some people don't like granulation. Next is Viridian and that is PG-18. It's not the um, most pigmented color but I certainly wouldn't call it weak. I'm trying comparing different brands to find my favorite. Here we go. I think I have enough pigment on my brush now. It's quite granulating, um, but the beauty of this one is, to me, it granulates and lifts. And so depending on if you want a... But it makes some really pretty aquas. Next, we have the not as quite as pretty colors to me. <laughs> um, but this is what I mean. I would have never tried these colors um, without this palette. This is yellow raw ochre. This one actually might be okay because I like yellow ochre as long as it's not too opaque. Okay, this actually is prettier than I thought it was going to be just like a yellow ochre. It is a little hard to get in and out of this palette I find, like just a little bit. Um, you don't, wouldn't want to use a great big brush for sure. I'm using kind of a large brush. Um, it's 
So I don't know if I got the most even swatch. I had to turn the camera off for a minute and um, tell my son goodbye before he went to work. But that uh, is much prettier than I thought that was going to be, actually. So <laughs> now crossing my fingers for the next color. Um, the next color is raw umber. <laughs> it's also the reason why I did not get this set right away <laughs> because I, uh, I don't think I'm going to like this color. But I could always be wrong. I love it when I'm wrong, actually. But I am using a fatter lard brush, and it's so this palette fits right in the palm of your hand, so it's super cute. Uh, but you will want to use a smaller brush. I'm using a size, it's all rubbed off because I've used it for like five years. But I believe it's a number 10 Da Vinci. It's a Cosmotop spin. I actually don't like it for anything other than swatching. So if you already have a brush that works for swatching, then you don't need this. But I do love it for swatching. Um, it's And I've used it for <laughs> over five years. Um, and oh uh, yeah, this isn't as bad as I thought. Certainly not gonna be my new favorite. If you've had dogs and kids, <laughs> like it's just like, oh but it's actually not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. But I didn't make a very big swatch of that because I don't wanna waste my arches. <laughs> but that's actually better than I thought it was gonna be. I was expecting it to have kind of green undertones. Uh, so that's made from PBR7 and PY43. And uh, that's actually kind of usable to me. Okay, now Venetian Red is another color that I was on the fence about. Um, quite honestly, because it's opaque. And if you use this color, I'd love to know what you use it for. It seems to me like it would be really good if you're an urban sketcher and you like um, paint a lot of buildings or landscapes, maybe. And it's very opaque, so I um, don't tend to reach for it very much. But I may just have not found the beautiful things to paint. It seems like it would be great for if you're painting a clay pot or something like that. Um, again, that's not that's not what I tend to paint very much, so. But I like to be open-minded and okay next is Schmincke's Paint Gray. And this is um, another color that I honestly wasn't sure. I don't, it's, um, it's kind of like a, very dark gray. It's made from PR 101. PB29 in PBK7, and it's very nice, but I actually really prefer the, I actually prefer the Payne's Gray Bluish um, is the one I prefer myself, but I like it to lean blue, so it just depends on what you're wanting. But I think this is going to be really good with this palette because I think it's going to be able to give you um, a nice mixing color maybe. So I can't wait to try that. So I got some Viridian in there, I think. And I tried to fix that. There are the swatches. It's got some nice mixing colors. I think I will save painting with these and for another video so this doesn't take too long. But I will share my artwork at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and try the May Mary Blue. The Burnt Umber, it was fine. I didn't have to fight to get the wrapper off, but the Transparent Yellow and the Lake Rose, um, I had to soak them and peel the paper off, just FYI. So here's Rose Lake. And I did soak to get those labels off. I have them pre-wet. Try to just swatch them the way they are. I don't want to give any paints a head start without letting you guys know. Okay, next is Transparent Yellow, made from PY150. Ooh, that's very bright. 
I think this is a really nice mixing color and it makes such pretty um, kind of almost sap greens um, as a mixing color. So if I have a limited palette, it's one of my, um, if I want to have a really limited palette, it's one of my go-tos, but you can also really wash it out to get lighter yellows. Um, it is probably staining though, but it's very transparent. Okay, next is Burnt Umber. Yeah, I really like that brown. That's a very useful brown. And that's why I needed it because um, I needed a really useful all around brown because I do not like mixing browns. <laughs> They're useful, but I don't want to waste time mixing them. There are the last three colors all swatched out. My Mary Blue, they re-wet beautifully also after they have um, soaked a bit. But yes, that was my haul. I would love to know if you've tried my Marte before. I will be painting with these in another video and I will share my artwork at the end. Thanks so much for watching.